Yo, yo, I'm Eric Taylor, owner of Salon Republic, and I'm here with none other than Ryan Colin. We're at the Roosevelt Hollywood right now. This is Lookbook 2017, put on by Kraft and Dre. And so, blessed by your presence, my friend. Uh, we've just met, and uh, this guy's got a huge personality and a huge heart, and he has so many good things to say. So why don't we just start with uh, your story. So where are you from, and, and how'd you get into hair? Okay, so uh, long time ago, when I was like, uh, 15, 16 years old, I wanted to be a hairdresser. Uh, where I'm from is uh, it's a small part of Ireland, it's, uh, it's uh, Katy. Uh, when I went to high school, it, was, it wasn't very cool to be a hairdresser. It was actually frowned upon and I'm probably seen to be uh, a girl's job, you know? Sure. Like hairdressing, you know what I mean? So how, why that's were that. you like, uh, that's for me? Uh, okay, so I always fashioned, I, I always followed fashion and I always thought, I was always into art. I, anything I was good at in school was uh, was artistically based, uh, fashionably based, and um, I always wanted to be a be, uh, be a stylist. And uh, long story short, I uh, I, I, I went and done my A levels. I I I, I, uh, I got all my grades. I went to university. I went to Liverpool. And uh, what, I, what did I, you study? I studied teaching. I want oh. to become a teacher. Oh. So. Uh, I neglected all my hairdress and I uh, kind of, uh, you know, what I wanted to do really, oh, uh, yeah. which was hairdress. And, mm -hmm. and I said, okay, what the hell with my mother? My mother said, uh, Brian, you know what? You'd be a great teacher. You'd be a great teacher because you're good with kids and uh, you're you're good at talking and everything. And and I went to Liverpool and I, I studied Liverpool. I studied uh, English mm -hmm. teaching in Liverpool. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was doing that. I did that for two years. And then and when I, whilst I was in Liverpool, I realized do you know what? This isn't for me. You know, teaching isn't 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 my calling. My calling is being a hairdresser. I want to be a hairdresser. So I remember when Liverpool, I used to get my hair cut every other weekend in this salon. And the salon that I used to get cut in, I used to see all these different uh, men cutting my hair, and and I was thinking, you know what? I want to do what you're doing. I want to do what you guys are doing. And that. Uh, I, I finally, I, I finally had the cojones. If, you, if, that, if that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that okay well, to say? Well, we call them the cojones. <laughs> the cojones. The cojones. Yeah. yeah. So you grabbed your balls. I and grabbed you said, them. I squeezed them. Yeah. yeah. And you said, I said I'm going to do what I really want to do. I'm going to do what I really want to do. So I left university. I dropped out of uni. I came home. I pursued uh, a career in hairdressing. So I, I, I uh, and how, I old, how old was this? When I was you 19 enrolled? years okay. old. So 18, 19. Yeah. I came home. Uh, a lot of stage. The latter stages of my uh, life at 19, came home, went straight in the uni in the college to uh, pursue a, a, a degree in hairdressing, and I really, really adapted to that quite quickly. Uh, completed that really quickly. I worked in a salon uh, called Scissors, which was owned by a cousin. My cousin owned it, so she employed me, yeah. which I'm I am entirely grateful for. She and she employed me there. I worked there for nine years. Wow. Nine years, bro. I wow. did. Uh, I did. I, I solely just did uh, women's hair for like six years. Oh my gosh. On the last four years, the last three four years of it, I said, you know what? I really really like doing men's hair. Mm -hmm. And I just uh, I just I switched over to the barbering scene, which yeah. was uh, which I think was um, which was which was um, undersaturated with people who knew how to section her, how to dress out her. So what I brought to the barbering scene in my local city was how to finish her and how to make them leave the salon looking like a million bucks. Okay. And uh, that's what I brought to to, uh, to the to the meal game. So when when you decided to finally grab your balls and, and turn into a hairdresser, <laughs> did anyone give you shit? Yeah, I got a couple of I got a I got a couple of uh, messages from a few close friends. But uh, ultimately, they knew it was the thing I should be doing. And, yeah. uh, but overall, the response to me doing that was yeah. overwhelming. Awesome. And uh, really, really, uh, really, really good. And uh, I, I, I thank everyone uh, for giving me the confidence in going and pursuing what I really wanted to do, which was men's hairdressing and, and hairdressing in general. Right. So I, I thank all of them guys. I thank everybody, you know. Okay, so how many years have you been doing uh, since you got your license and started doing hair? Yeah, I'm doing Actually, like, you, you guys aren't licensed. 
it, we are it, we are so much licensed. I, I I understand that in America you have to you have to uh, be licensed right. to be a hairdresser. Right. We uh, we we merely uh, we we uh, graduate from a college, which is a hairdressing college, and we uh, we graduate a two-year course. Once you've done that, you're you're licensed. All right. So you you start working in the salon. And you're in there for how many years did you say? I'm like, in there for nine years. Nine years. Nine years. Yeah. Okay. And you did ladies' hair for six. For in my five six years. Yeah. Okay. But on the side, doing man's hair. Doing okay. man's hair on the side. But uh, very very quickly uh, realized that my calling that I feel was for doing man's hair. For doing. Right. I was really good at short hair. I did a lot of girls who were short hair. I ended up doing a lot of like pattern work and undercuts. Oh, and, interesting. So that kind of. Um, Took me to where I am right now, which is doing an answer, you know. Right. Okay. And, and, and so I have my own salon right now, which uh, which I, I, I still have uh, female clients from that salon who come to me and still won't leave and and, and they, come, they get their undercuts, they get the designs, they get everything, you know. So. So so, so what is it about uh, keeping the clients? Why do the clients? Uh, you could probably you move to LA and you would keep all your clients. So what, what is that? What, what is that secret sort of recipe? Okay, so I think uh, I think when you're doing hairdressing, okay, I think the main thing is okay is is, is customer service. Every time I do a show or a seminar, I mean I do a lot of these around the UK. Yeah. Every time I speak about this, I always say to the guys who are, who are looking to become the best hairstylist they can be is. To, I, I said that the cut is a large part of it, but a large another part of it is the customer service. Guys, don't forget your customer service. Don't forget uh, where you came from and, 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 and be humble. Always ask the person what they want. If it's not to your certain compromise, all right? The main part of why someone's going to come back to you is the consultation. So if you have a good consultation, you talk to the person and Connect, right? You connect, you connect, you ask them why they want this haircut. Right. What haircut do they want? You know, if they give you a reason back why they want it and you can connect to that, yeah. they're going to feel that right. and they're going to come back and you're always going to have a re you're going to have a loyal customer right. and what you're going to have then is a, is, a, is, a, is a fucking secure business. Right. People are going to come back. Absolutely. And, and you're going to have, and you're forever going to have a long, a clientele list of of people, your arm, as long as your arm, as long right. as your arm. So you're talking about uh, creating a uh, a connection, you know, yeah. to your clients, giving you what they want, and, and really creating an experience, aren't you? I mean, and yeah. oftentimes it's the little things, right? Like they, they come to the salon and they might be thirsty. You know, do you offer them a water every time they come in? All that kind of stuff. Hospitality, I think a lot of people overlook it. A lot of people who sometimes, you know, develop a full book of clients, uh, they start getting a little bit lazy. Uh, but things like that are, are very, very important. You know, I'm not a hairdresser. I, I'm a client and I'm a fan. And, you know, I see all of our hairdressers and, and I see what they do and, and the little things that make a big difference between those who really crush it uh, versus those who are merely just like riding it. And so uh, all of that makes so much sense. I love it. So. Um, so you guys have your your trends that maybe are a little bit different than our trends, you know, on the West Coast or, yes. or the U.S. And and maybe there's some blending now with social media because you know the the walls are not, um, or at least the ocean is not so big as it once no, was, right? No. But like, what kind of trends are you working on these days? Like, what things get you excited? Okay, so for me personally, um, I can't speak of everybody. I can't speak for everyone from my, where I come from. But for me, it's about. Uh, but it's about the styling of the hair, it's about the finishing of the hair. Um, I've uh, made a career on a clientele uh, of, of when I uh, do the haircut and when I style it and finish it, and when they leave my salon, they leave it feeling and looking a million bucks, mm -hmm. a million pounds sterling, mm -hmm. should I say? Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I'm when I'm we, talking about back home. Of course. So we, we can do the conversion. When I was a hairdresser, uh, you weren't allowed to do a blow dry or a long graduated haircut on a woman if she didn't, if she left the salon feeling crap. I mean, you, you wouldn't let that happen. Right. You wouldn't let that happen. I'm trying to bring that to the men's game. I'm trying to bring right. that to how uh, men feel and how they walk out of the salon. I mean, right. a lot of my friends, when they walk out of the shop, they text me later on that evening and they say, 
Ryan uh, and going out again this Saturday night. Is there any chance they go come in just to get style? Can you style yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. The way you did it. Totally. Not even cut it, just style yeah. it. And I would say, oh, man, I'm so busy, but I'll try my best. Yeah. So if you can leave the person feeling and looking a million bucks, uh, it's a massive, massive deal. So yeah. for me, and I think I think uh, I can speak for a lot of the European stylists um, that I know. There's so many names. There are so many names yeah. I can speak of. Um, what I notice is uh, via Instagram, via Facebook, via Twitter, all these different things is that I, I notice that they'll always leave the client looking um, amazing, um, right. uh, styled, and ready to go, ready to bounce. Love it. All right, so you've done you've done really. Uh, you've done really That's well. Andrew does hair. <laughs> that was Andrew does hair. Yeah, no, no big guy. deal. Just you know. No big deal. So uh, you've done really well on social. Uh, yes. So uh, I, I think one of the demographics that is struggling with social is some of the older people. You know, I'm I'm yeah. 40, and I I'm kind of right on the cusp. I'm a little bit of a hybrid, right? And so I I know how it feels to be uncomfortable with just the notion of getting used to documenting so many parts of your day to then broadcast. And people who are older than I am, you know, they struggle with it even more. So the hairdressers who are out there who are, you know, 60, 65 years old and are great hairdressers, but they're losing clients to some of the younger people because of social, what do you want to tell them? Like, what? how do you advise them to kind of up their game? Okay, so I think uh, social media, I talk a lot about social media, when I'm on a, when I'm doing shows, social media for me um, has helped me massively. I'm 31 years old, come on 32, I shortly. So I feel like I feel like I, I, I uh, need to make it uh, now or never, and uh, I do understand that. I have young lads working in my salon who are 16, 18, 19, and they are very much uh, beginning this uh, long journey in the hairdressing game with social media. The people above 40, all I can say is, um, if you get onto social media, the thing I, I would advise is to to, uh, to search people who, who suit you, uh, who, who you want to look up. Don't try to be something you're not. Don't try to search up all these kids who are 16, 17, 18, because that, that might feel you. Your clients are gonna, your clients are gonna understand that. They're gonna, they're gonna say, okay, so they're gonna, they're gonna think you're going to be so you're trying to be someone else mm -hmm. i think it's very much uh, a case of finding finding people around your your own even your own your own age and everything and try to uh, pursue that mm -hmm. social media is such a such a tough cookie to crack yep. and uh, it's hard for me to speak of because it, i've been doing it a long time man. right it is a long game it's a I, long game it's, it's a very, very long I'm, game I'm 31 it's, i've been doing it since i was 22. right it's a long it's a game long it takes game. it takes years it takes it, years. It takes to, years to get good at taking pictures. It takes exactly, years. exactly. It, it, the picture thing. Yeah. Should I talk about the picture thing? Yes, yeah. Uh, the picture thing. I started off. You, if you search my Instagram, guys, Ryan Colin her. All right. I don't. I don't delete any of my Instagram because I don't delete it intentionally because I want people to see my journey. Uh, if you look back at the way at the start of my Instagram game, I was doing haircuts that were very, very amateur, very, very not great not great and uh, you can see a progression you can see a progression in the where I am right now mm -hmm. um, one thing I would suggest is if you do uh, if you do um, regard your work as something that, that, that you think is good invest in a camera invest in something that's gonna um, take your work to that next level try to um, take it back and work on it uh, and, and, and then put it online because what you're gonna do is you're gonna do yourself justice the justice you deserve um, if you don't do the just, if you don't give yourself the just you deserve, all you're going to look like is someone else who just posts pictures online, and, right. and you might never progress that next level. Right. I bought a camera, everything took off. Right. When I bought a camera, right. and, uh, I'm here, I'm in Hollywood, I'm talking to this guy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's pretty incredible. It's pretty, it's pretty incredible. incredible. It's, 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 it's not pretty incredible. It is yeah. incredible. Uh, yeah. It no. is incredible. I mean, you've done so well. You've done so well. It's very, very impressive. So. Um, so where do we find you on social media? So on social media, my main my main hub is uh, an Instagram is Ryan Colin Her. I am on Twitter also at Ryan Colin eighty five, giving away my age. 
uh, or on Facebook, there's Ryan Collins, search me, you'll see my you'll see my profile picture. It's probably me cutting her the picture. Um, but Instagram is my big one, it's Ryan Cullen, uh, Ryan Cullen her, the name of my, my salon. So I have one more question. You do education, right? Yes. And so uh, anything coming up that anyone needs to know about? Okay, so coming up, I've got a few big gigs. I've got, a, I'm going to, as soon as I leave here, this amazing uh, venue in Hollywood, which I can't believe I'm here. Uh, I'm going, I'm leaving, I'm going straight to do a Liverpool football player's wedding. Oh, wow. In, uh, in Portugal. I'm going to do the, wow. the. I'm going to do the top table for them. All the grooms men. I'm, I'm, I'm gigging them up. Uh, then two weeks later, I'm going to Dubai. I'm going to do a hair show in Dubai. Oh my gosh. The month later, I'm going to Spain to do a, a hair show in Spain. Wow. And then the month after that, I'm going. I'm doing one in Ireland. Wow. Amazing show in Ireland. And then after that, it's going to be whatever comes. I'm, I'm bringing it all in. Whatever comes, I'm open for it. And do you know what it is? It's just great. It's great to be part of it. So. I love it. Amazing. Yeah. Thanks for being here, buddy. Oh, welcome. Awesome. Thank you very Thank much. You. Appreciate it. All right.